What's up guys, Joe Mike here, and I thought it was about time for a tutorial. It's been a while since I've done a good old fashioned 3D printing tutorial, so I've got a good one this time. It's super simple, so this should be a fairly quick video. So if you've ever heard this sound coming from your hot end, you either A went, what the heck was that, or B went, crap, there's moisture in the filament. And this is especially true if you print with this stuff, nylon. Nylon absorbs moisture like nuts. You gotta keep it in a bag with desiccant, silica, anything to keep it dry. And even then, it tends to absorb moisture like crazy, even in a bag with desiccant. So, what is our solution there? Well, pretty much our only solution is to dry the filament out. And we have a couple of ways to do that at our disposal. One is the oven. We can slam this stuff in a conventional house oven and bake it basically for about 160 degrees Fahrenheit to 180 degrees Fahrenheit for six to eight hours. That's a lot of time to just keep your oven on baking filament. But there's this other method that has come on the scene recently that's a filament dryer, which is basically a food dehydrator, but kind of manufactured and geared towards drying just the filament. The leading one right now is called the Print Dry, and it is basically just a food dehydrator, but with larger cavities, larger uh, containers for your filament spools. So that got me thinking. Uh, the print dry roughly costs about 99 bucks. How can we do this? How can we accomplish this for cheaper? And the answer just kind of came to me while I was browsing Amazon. And here is my solution. This might look pretty familiar to those of you who have seen the print dry system, or even if you just looked at the picture that I showed you earlier in this video, that's because it pretty much is the print dry system. If you look at this guy, the Flexion, food dehydrator next to the print dry system. If you remove that part and just look at the bases, they're pretty much the same thing. They, they look exactly the same. The switch is in the same spot and the temperature control knob is in the same spot. So this is what I found while I was browsing Amazon. I was like, that is pretty much the print dry, but with one big difference. It doesn't have the two giant cavities for the filament rolls to actually fit in. All it has is your traditional food dehydrator plates that are these gridded guys that allow your food to get dehydrated nice and easy. And as you can see, I'll just grab this roll of Nylon X. As you can see, this stuff just isn't, uh, isn't tall enough to handle even a skinny spool. This Nylon X is a pretty skinny spool to begin with, but it just doesn't it doesn't fit. There's just no way that if these stay the way they are, they're going to fit. So we got to modify this just a little bit and it's easy. I've already done it to the most of this, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Basically all you need to do is cut out this guy, this grid. This is made out of an acrylic. So you want to be careful, but you get yourself a nice set of angled flush cutter plier cutters. You probably have these already because they're great for cutting filament straight on. But you basically just kind of go along the outside rim where this mesh meets the main body and just start snipping like this. And you just go all the way around the whole thing until you make it back to where you started. Now I will add, please, please, please make sure you've got some kind of eye protection on while you do this because the acrylic doesn't like to be cut. Acrylic is very much a shatter material when it's broken. So when you cut it, it has a tendency to shatter and pieces kind of fly out at you. So you need something to cover your eyes at the least. Regular glasses are usually fine for this. If you don't have glasses, if you don't wear glasses, 
Get yourself some safety glasses. You should probably have a set anyways, but they're always a good thing to keep on hand. Wear them while you're doing this. And there's the last one. So now you should have two pieces. You should have the rim and then the mesh that you just cut out from the rim. This guy, that goes in the trash. This is the part we want. Now you've got some pretty sharp edges along here that you can keep if you want to. I found that using just a regular old pocket knife of some type and just kind of going along and winding these things down a bit helps a lot with preventing ouchies to your fingers when you pick this thing up. So just kind of go around and scrape. Be very careful with your knife cut away from you at all times. Use best practices when using a knife. But cutting away from you, cutting away from your hand, just kind of go along the edge of the rim where you did all your cuts. And there you go. That's a pretty decent rim. I'm pretty comfortable with the uh, amount of plastic that's left on that. But now we've got just the rim, which is all we wanted. So the next step is to take the rest of them, which I've already done ahead of time. Whoop. And we want to build the hydrator compartment up as tall as we can. Now keep in mind, you're going to want to keep at least one of these intact fully to act as the bottom of the compartment. And we'll actually, we can glue this on there if we want to, but we don't have to. But we are going to glue the ring that we just cut onto the other rings that we cut. So this thing comes with five rings total, so five levels total, and you cut four of them, leave one hole, and then there's the lid. And at least four of these we're going to glue together using just simple super glue. I prefer the Loctite gel just because it gives me a little bit more control over the uh, gluing process. It's, uh, it doesn't run all over the place. It stays nice and firm. So Loctite super glue gel control is probably the best for this application. Now there's these little slots here that go on top of these tabs and help bring the height up. Now you can actually set this in here without setting those on the tabs, but then it actually lowers the height by several millimeters. So we want to attach this via these tabs. So all I do is I put a little dab of super glue on each of the standoffs where this thing makes contact with those tabs. Now it doesn't take them very much glue at all to do this. A little dab on each tab will do you just fine. Now you just want to find the, uh, the standoff tabs on the bottom layer and line it up as best you can and just kind of sit it on top there. So make sure that you hold this nice and tight like I am all the way around the ring for about 30 seconds while this super glue gets its initial curing done. And like I said before, if you want to, you can glue these four rings that you cut onto the ring that is still whole and just make one compartment that is easy to remove. That is completely up to you. You don't have to, but if you want the unit to be whole like the print dry system, then you can glue it onto that bottom ring as well. So now I'm going to apply glue to the bottom of my four plates that I've glued together already to attach it to that very bottom surface plate. Same way, going around attaching just a little dab of super glue gel on each of the little areas that are going to make contact with the uh, tabs on the bottom layer. And then I'm just going to set it on there. So make sure that you apply pressure downward on this layer as well so the super glue can get its cure and get that initial set that you want. All right. I think that looks good. We can put the lid on top like so. And now we have a filament dryer and this thing cost me 40 bucks off Amazon. So you can make your own filament dryer 40 bucks and a little bit of elbow grease. And as you'll notice, since we put the tabs up to get this as high as possible, we now have room to put our spool in. Now, given the print dry does have two compartments for spools, as well as an ability to take the filament out of the dryer while 
it's being dried, you can print with it. Now you can make modifications to this if you wanted to and put a spool rotator in the bottom and then just drill a small hole for the filament to come out or don't even worry about it. Just dry out your filament, print with it, then put it back in a bag with desiccant and if you need to, just use it again. And yes, this will handle big fat spools. And I wanted to demonstrate that because the Tallman spools, the tiny little guys, are pretty fat compared to most spools. And this thing will handle it just fine. Goes in, lid down, and you're good to go. So you can dry out Tallman, you can dry out pretty much every spool there is out there. And just to get my point across, this is a spool filament that you get with a Prusa printer. I got this one with my Mark III. It is by far the fattest spool that I have in my shop. So if it fits, anything will fit. It fits. So there you have a perfectly universal spool drying mechanism. For only $40 off of Amazon, you can pick up this dehydrator and just do a little bit of cutting, do a little bit of gluing, and you've got yourself a beautiful filament drying system that you can set and forget. So that's about it. That's all it takes to get a filament drying system for under 50 bucks and not have to worry about leaving your oven on for eight hours. Simple food dehydrator with the same control ability as the print dry to select what temperature you want to dry at, an on off switch, and the ability to hold any size spool under $50 right there. You can get these off of Amazon. I actually got this one from Amazon clearance for $33. So keep an eye out for the deals. I'm going to post a link to this down into the description along with a kind of table or list of the various types of filament and what settings on this you should use to dry them out if you're having issues with the popping or moisture absorption. Like I said, nylon is the biggest offender, but other filaments definitely absorb moisture as well. Your flexibles, PLA, PETG, ABS, so forth and so on. So it's good for any type of filament. You just throw it in there, kick it on, dry out your filament, go back to printing. Now I want to just say I am not knocking the print dry system. They have a nice system in place. There's a lot of extra bells and whistles that you don't get doing this method. But if you don't want to pay $99 for the print dry system, this is a great alternative to get you something that is pretty much exactly the same when it comes to the way that it dries the filament. Now it may miss the filament feeding and the spools, uh, rollers and all that stuff. But if you just need filament drying, this is more than enough for your needs. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. If you found this video helpful, please give me that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please hit subscribe and make sure to ring the bell to get updates when I post new content. As always, if you like what I do and you wanna help support me, down below in the description are just several ways that you can help support this channel, including a t-shirt design. That you can now order it at Merch Minion. Uh, there's Patreon, and there's also my Amazon affiliate store that is filled with 3D printing everything, filament, uh, the whole shebang a bang, filament, hot ends, anything print, 3D printed related, I have it in there, and it's down in the description. Every dollar you contribute goes right back into the channel to help make content. So I don't take it for myself. I feed it right back into the channel. I buy cool things like food dehydrators to chop up, filament, printers, and anything else that I think would make a good video for you guys. With that, I'll say keep an eye out for a couple more videos coming up. And the filament series is not dead. We're gonna be back soon. But from my house to your house, Happy printing. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, checking one, two, three. Ow. <laughs> For the love.